Hey, good day, everyone. Welcome to the Gables uh, Tax Planning Group uh, webinar. My name is Bert Salazar, and I am going to be your host uh, today for this event. It's going to be a really good one uh, because we're going to be talking today how to, how to minimize or how to avoid uh, the fatal four in retirement. So that's a conversation that I normally have with all my clients. It is very critical. It is an extremely important conversation that all of you uh, need to have with your advisors because as you prepare for retirement planning, uh, especially retirement distribution planning, there are gonna be a lot of booby traps that are gonna be facing you. So we're gonna be discussing the fatal four uh, in today's uh, episode and, and webinar in order to give you the ability to go back to your financial advisors and make sure that they're looking at your finances uh, through a telescope as opposed to a microscope. Now again, Bert Salazar, and I'm going to be the host uh, for this event. Uh, just to give you a little bit of feedback, uh, there are three things that we do very well uh, for the vast majority of the clients that we engage, and that's tax planning, that's insurance planning, and then alternative investments. And the big difference between, do, between doing tax preparation and tax planning is that when you do tax preparation, it's just a gathering of documents and submitted, submitting those uh, to your accountant in order for him or her you know, to do the taxes uh, for the previous year. And then obviously you're gonna get a phone call uh, from your accountant telling you whether you're gonna to have to pay some additional uh, taxes or you're gonna get a refund or you're gonna break even. Uh, tax planning is a different um, ball game altogether. Why? Because not only do we have the ability to do tax preparation planning uh, and do your taxes from one year to the next, but we're also gonna do a tremendous amount of um, uh, work in, in doing tax planning and preparing you for taxes in the future. Uh, in other words, we have the ability to do, to do and to use uh, tax planning software that, that allows us to determine what your tax liability is gonna be a year from now, two years from now, three years, five years from now, and thus give us the ability to start moving and making tax decisions from one year to the next in order to maximize the retirement income that you're gonna receive in retirement while also minimi minimizing and or eliminating your tax liabilities in the future. So, you know, those are things that we cover with many of our clients as we uh, engage in them for the first time. And along, along those lines, we do what is known as a customized uh, tax planning uh, and retirement distribution blueprint. And I'll go into a little bit more detail at the very end. Uh, but I wanna start with the, uh, the fatal four. And the fatal four are the four major issues that can happen to any of us uh, on this webinar, to any of you, when it comes to your retirement planning and your retirement distribution planning. Now, obviously, the vast majority of uh, financial advisors out in the marketplace uh, very seldom do any type of retirement planning or retirement distribution planning uh, from a risk management perspective. And this is what we're gonna to cover today because, because we feel very strongly, number one, that information without education always leads to failure. So uh, my goal tonight and, and, and for this webinar is to provide you with good quality information and good quality education that you can take with you and move on and, and get things done for the betterment of yourself, your family, and your business. So the fatal four is comprised of uh, the things that can happen to you and your family that could have a detrimental impact on your financial life. Uh, so the risk of uh, living too long, uh, we'll talk about that one tonight. Uh, the risk of living with a disability, we'll also go into some details along those lines. Uh, the risk of living with eroding factors, and there are many of them, there are actually 10 of them, but we're not gonna be discussing all 10 of them. Uh, for me, an eroding factor is anything that can erode uh, the value and the usage uh, of your money in retirement. So uh, uh, taxes, inflation, uh, stock market volatility, interest rate volatility, these are all issues, uh, propensity to consume. These are all issues that can have a negative impact on your financial life in the future. And then last but not least, we're gonna be discussing a little bit 
about the risk of uh, dying too soon. Uh, what would be the impact to your family uh, if you have a premature death? And a premature death could happen um, before you retire or, or post-retirement, uh, let's say within the first you know, five years of retirement. So, you know, obviously these are things that we're gonna be addressing uh, from a business perspective and hopefully you're gonna be able to walk away uh, in this very short period, period, period of time that we have available, you're gonna walk away with, with, away with a lot of information along those lines. So the first one that we're gonna be discussing today is gonna be the risk, uh, the risk of living too long. And, and just for practical information, people are living a lot longer today than ever before. Uh, obviously, uh, medical technology, medical advances uh, have created the fact that people are living a lot longer today. The fact that you're able to, to identify certain things that could be detrimental to you from a medical standpoint so, so earlier or so much earlier uh, than ever before, uh, it does give you and give Americans the ability to start uh, being proactive uh, in their health care. Uh, obviously, right now, there are less people sm uh, smoking than ever before. There are more people exercising today than ever before. Although we still have, as a society, at least in the United States, uh, approximately two-thirds of Americans are overweight. Uh, but at least uh, the information is out there for you to be able and for all of us to be able to do something along those lines. So uh, living a long, a long life, it's a, it's a good thing. But if living long uh, is a good thing, you know, running out of money before you run out of life um, is, is something that is very, very critical and something that you need to be able to pay attention to. And there are a number of reasons why you may run out of money before you run out of life. Number one, you know, Americans, for the most part, are not savers. So we have, we are, we're, uh, uh, we are an economy uh, of spenders. You know, we spend a lot of money. We save very little. Uh, so obviously, the vast majority of clients that I engage, and I deal with clients that are either in the middle class or the upper middle class, and I do deal with uh, certain uh, wealthy clients. But unless you're very, you're fairly wealthy, the vast majority of Americans have not saved enough money in retirement. Uh, and obviously not enough money to be able to deal with, you know, three decades of retirement distribution planning. Uh, that means that if you're going to plan for retirement or you're working with someone that's helping you plan for retirement uh, and you plan to retire at the age of 65, which would be normal retirement age, and it's been that way for many, many years, you better be able to plan for three decades of retirement. So that means that you got to be able to plan until age 95 and sometimes even beyond. Uh, by the way, one of the fastest growing generations in the United States are people that are born between, uh, that are between the ages of 85 and 105. Uh, so that means that we're getting older and living a lot longer along those lines. Now, by the same token, when it comes to retirement distribution planning, and planning for those three decades, um, I named those decades the go-go years, the slow-go years, and the no-go years. You know, the go-go years, if you retire at 65, both you and your spouse, if you happen to be married, uh, for the first 10 years, you're going to be fairly healthy. You're going to be doing things that you never got around to do before you retired. Obviously, you were working and 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 setting your family your family up for retirement. But you're going to be doing a lot of traveling. You actually may be spending more money in the first ten years in retirement than you did altogether while you were working. So understanding that the go go years are very very critical uh, is uh, is an important factor in determining the rest of your life. Now, once you get into your mid-70s, uh, perhaps uh, you're not as healthy as you used to be. Uh, you may still be doing some travel. So between the ages of 75 and 85 is what I call the slow-go years, meaning that you're, you're going to be traveling and you may be doing some things, but not as much as you did before. You may not travel as far. Uh, you may be dealing more with your grandchildren, and grandchildren so you're closer to home. So obviously things are gonna start changing for you. And then once you get into your mid eighties is what I call the no-go years. You obviously, your health is not gonna be the same, the same way that it was while you were in your sixties or your seventies. Uh, you may have other issues that you need to, need to deal with. Uh, you may be taking care of your, uh, of your spouse 
um, if, if he or she happens to, to be in a long-term care facility and so forth. So your life is going to be changing. Obviously, in the no-go years, uh, your number one goal is to, um, number one, make sure that you wake up on the green side of the grass, and number two, that you, run, you don't run out of money before you run out of life. And the reason is simple. You know, if you run, if you run out of money before you run out of life, you have a couple of choices. Uh, choice number one, uh, uh, you can die. And choice number two, you can move in with your kids, uh, in which uh, most of us are going to choose to do what? Yeah, exactly, die. So obviously, these are things that you need to pay attention to. Now, uh, what are some of the things that you can do from a business perspective in preparation and in dealing and in mitigating the fact that you may live a long life? Number one, you want to have as much guaranteed cash flow and as much guaranteed income as you can possibly can. Uh, so annuities are going to play a major, major role in your retirement distribution planning. Uh, by the way, for those of you that may be on the top 1% of the population because you have some, some kind of a guaranteed pension uh, from your employer and or if you happen to have been a public employee, you probably have a guaranteed pension. Uh, bear in mind that a guaranteed pension is an annuity. Your social security benefits are annuities. So the more annuities and the more look-alike pensions that you can create, the better it's going to be for you, for your family, and even if you own a business, uh, for the business overall. So obviously, there are many different types of annuities. Uh, we do recommend for the vast majority of our clients uh, fixed annuities or index annuities. Fixed annuities, you're going to get a guaranteed income for life that neither you nor your spouse, your surviving spouse, uh, may outlift. So that's going to give you that guaranteed protection. The fact that it's going to help you avoid running out of money before you run out of life. Another way to, to uh, guarantee some cash flow is to get involved into index annuities. Index annuities uh, give you the ability to have principal protection. It also gives you the ability to participate in a portion of the upswing of the market. So if the market does well in a given year, you can participate and do fairly well for yourself and your family. If the market doesn't do well and, and loses money, uh, your principal is guaranteed, so it gives you the best of both worlds. Uh, some of these companies also provide you uh, not only with the, uh, the index and the guaranteed principal protection, but they will also guarantee a pension, a private pension uh, through the insurance carrier obviously based on the claims paying ability of the insurance carrier that you choose, uh, and, and it'll provide a lot of income along those lines. And then for some of you, uh, these same index annuities also provide uh, or have long-term care provisions assigned to it, which is a win-win for each uh, and every, every one of you and every one of us as we start to prepare for retirement distribution planning. Now make certain that if you haven't had this discussion with your financial advisor, that you start thinking about you know, the things that can prevent you from making it from point A to point B in the most plausible and the best possible uh, alternative that you have available with you. So uh, again, uh, what percentage uh, should it go into a fixed annuity versus an index? Or does it make sense to have an annuity altogether? Uh, it really depends and it goes on a case-by-case on a -case basis. So it's very difficult for me on this webcast and on this webinar to be able to dictate and tell you what you need to do for yourself and your family. All I can say is that these are things that are available and these are issues and concerns that you're gonna to have to be facing with in the future. Now, so we've talked a little bit about the risk of living too long. Uh, the next uh, risk that I wanna share with all of you tonight is gonna to be the risk, of, the risk of living with a disability. The fact that people are living a lot longer today uh, it's a good thing, uh, but that also means that the longer you live, the higher the propensity uh, for you to have some kind of a disability. Uh, it could be Alzheimer's, it could be Parkinson's, it could be a stroke, it could be a number of different issues that uh, can affect, can affect uh, your life um, uh, in, a, in a negative way at some point in time in the future. Obviously, planning for uh, the risk of living with a dis disability, there are a lot of things that you need to be aware of. Um, uh, for instance, if you happen to be uh, age uh, 65 today and you're married, 
uh, and you're fairly healthy, there's a 75% probability that one of you is going to have a need for long-term care in the future. And by the way, when it comes to long-term care, long-term care, uh, normally you may have some home health care first, you know, for a couple of years or a year or so, and then you may have to go into an uh, ALF, which is an assisted living facility. Uh, eventually, you may end up into a nursing facility or nursing home, and then ultimately uh, you would go into hospice care. Now, the challenging thing about long-term care and the fact that I deal with a lot of clients that are, that are dealing, a number of my clients are dealing with those issues today, is that it doesn't necessarily go in the same, um, in the same way that I just explained to you. You know, you may be in home health care today, and tomorrow morning you wake up and you have to be in a nursing facility because the care that needs to be provided to you now is at a, such a high level and such intensity that a home health care or assisted living facility may not be able to do that for you any longer. The other issue with long-term care that you need to be aware of is who's going to provide the care. Most of the time in the very beginning, uh, your, your spouse may be the one and your immediate family may be the ones providing the care. So in many ways, they have to stop living their lives in order to care for yours. So these are things that need to be taken into consideration as you start to decipher and put together a, a long-term care plan as part of your overall retirement distribution planning. Uh, the other issue that is uh, most important is the cost of long-term care. You know, traditionally speaking, the cost of long-term care in the United States um, has been uh, as high as two and a half to three times the cost of inflation in the United States. So that means that those costs are rapidly increasing from one year to the next. Uh, in the state of Florida, the average nursing facility is costing $92,000 today. Now, can you fast forward 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years down the line what that cost is going to be? So obviously that's something that is gonna be very, very critical for the vast majority of Americans. Uh, whenever we engage a client, I wanna make certain that they're protecting them, themselves uh, from the fatal four. So we talk about, you know, how do you protect yourself and your assets and your family from living too long? And now we're discussing living with a disability. The other issue with living with a disability, as much as I love many of you on this uh, call that join me on a weekly basis, um, I would rather you die than go into a nursing facility. Because the other problem that living with a disability brings to the table uh, that most Americans have not even considered is that if you go into a long-term care facility and you're there three, four, five years, so if you have Alzheimer's, you may be there, you know, seven to 10 years because your heart is uh, doing very well, your body's fine, um, but your mind is gone, is the fact that your family is going to have to invade more of your retirement assets more of their retirement assets in order to be able to pay for the additional expenses of long-term care. So if you and your spouse had put together a retirement distribution planning in which both of you were going to be fine uh, all throughout your retirement life and neither one of you was going to run out of money before you run out of life, unless you've done proper planning, unless you have uh, included uh, certain uh, annuities that can offset the additional cost of long-term care, uh, your surviving spouse may not, may not have any other choice but to start dipping more and more into principle of the assets that were there available for the two of you in order to take care of that, you know, one partner in life uh, who happens to be going through a long-term care issue and or concern today. Uh, if that long-term care lasts anywhere between three, five, perhaps even seven years, by the time that, um, that person that had the long-term care need passes away, uh, there may not be any money left in order to provide and continue to provide a retirement income to that surviving spouse. So all of a sudden, uh, you know, the, that, that, uh, that life that you thought in retirement that was going to be so good to both of you and to the two of you 
um, may no longer be there, neither for the spouse who just passed away after dealing with a long-term care uh, issue and concern, but even for yourself as a survivor, because either you ran out of money in order to cover those additional expenses, or you ran out of money before you ran out of life, or the amount of money that is left is so minimal that your standard of living is going to have to depreciate significantly in order for you to make it uh, until the very, very end of your life. So it's really sad when I engage clients for the first time. And my client base is uh, primarily derived of, of people that are already, clients that are already in retirement. Some that are within five years of retirement and those that are anywhere between five and 10 years in retirement. And when they come to visit with me for the first time, because of the fact that I am a tax planner and a retirement strategist, the vast majority of discussions that I'm having with you today on this call and on this webinar are discussions that have never been uh, had with those clients uh, up until the point that they visited with me. And many a times, you know, they're already coming to see me because they have issues and concerns that nobody else had been able to, to address with them. So we've talked a little bit about the risk of living too long, the risk of living uh, with a disability. Now I want to touch upon the third risk, which is the risk of living with eroding factors. And again, as I said at the very onset, uh, the, the risk of eroding factors is anything that can erode the value of your money. So taxes, inflation, stock market volatility, interest rate volatility, lawsuits, uh, propensity to consume, uh, financial fees, uh, uh, maintenance, wear and tear. Uh, these are things that are gonna be attacking each and every one of us, each and every one of you, as you go through your retirement, uh, your retirement years, because life goes on and life happens. So when we talk about taxation, one of the big questions that I get asked uh, from clients often is, Bert, where do you think that taxes are gonna be in the future? And I would argue that uh, over the next uh, 10 years, uh, there's a very high probability that taxes are gonna be a lot, low, a lot higher in the future than they are today. Now, if you may recall, we just, um, we just had a new tax law take effect um, and that started January 1 of 2018. And that tax law uh, will sunset uh, in eight years. Actually, we're in 2019, so it's seven years from now. Uh, that law is going to sunset December 31st, 2025. So when you wake up January 1 of 2026, it's going to go back to the old tax law where the tax brackets were higher. Now, I'm not too concerned about 2026. I am mostly concerned about 2028 and 2030 and where taxes are gonna be at that point in time because at that point in, point in time, because someone is gonna have to pay the piper. See, you can, you can borrow from Peter to pay Paul, but you can only do it for so long. Eventually, Peter is gonna run out of money and then Paul is gonna be in trouble. So what are some of the things that, that are, what are some of the things that are going to get this country in trouble? Well, number one, let's, try, let's take a look at our national debt. We're almost at 22 trillion and counting. That means um, uh, two, it's 21 trillion, 800 billion and something. So it's getting close uh, to 22 trillion. So that's a, uh, uh, that's a two. Uh, uh, that's, that's a one followed by 12 zeros. So we're almost at 22 trillion. Pretty soon it's gonna be a two, two and 12 zeros along those lines. So, uh, and that debt uh, is obviously, uh, we don't have the money to pay for that debt. Uh, the interest on that debt is gonna continue to increase every single year, especially now that interest rates are starting to creep up. Um, so being able to service that debt is gonna cost more and more money uh, in the future that it does today. Uh, the other major issue that we have in the United States in, additional, in addition to the national debt is, is the fact uh, that we have a national deficit. 
we're bringing in about 3.3 to 3.4 trillion dollars in revenue every year but we're spending north of four so uh, either 2019 or 2020 depending on where we're at uh, is going to be the first time in history that the uh, that the debt that the difference in the debt between what we bring in and what we spend out that deficit is going to be approximately one trillion dollars now if you think the national debt is bad and the deficit is bad wait till i tell you about the unfunded liabilities in this country and by the way, the unfunded liabilities in the United States are those liabilities that the U.S. government has promised to all of us that they were going to take care of us and that they were going to pay to us, and they don't have the money to pay for it today. So when we take a look at Social Security, we take a look at Medicare, we take a look at Medicaid, we take a look at Medicare Part D, and we take a look at the interest on the national debt, all of those numbers put together hover at around $115 trillion. Now, when I get to this part of the conversation with my clients, uh, my clients are, are pretty puzzled. And, and one of the questions that I, that I get often is, Bert, you know, how much is, how much is a trillion dollars? Because no one has been able to truly quantify what it is. Now, obviously, you can do the calculations and you can figure it out. But most clients do not understand the impact of one trillion dollars, let alone 115 trillion. 115 trillion. So let me make it easy for you. A million seconds ago was 12 days ago. A billion seconds ago was 32 years ago. A trillion seconds ago was almost 32,000 years ago and man was barely walking the earth at that time. So that's $1 trillion. Can you imagine now a debt of almost 22 trillion, a deficit of a uh, trillion dollars, and an unfunded liability of $115 trillion? So there's no doubt in my mind and in the vast majority of Americans that taxes are gonna have to uh, either double or at least increase by 30, 40, 45, 50% in the future compared to what it is today. So that brings me to the next issue regarding the, the eroding factors. If we are now living uh, where the debt is the highest that it's ever been in the country, and our taxes are at the third lowest level that they've ever been in the country, other than at the very beginning of the IRS code back in 1913, and during the period of the Great Depression, we're actually living in the third lowest tax brackets in the history of our country. So the debt is at the highest, yet the taxes are almost at the lowest, where do you think that taxes are going to go in the future? As a matter of fact, uh, because of the fact that taxes are lower today than they've ever been, uh, we're actually uh, on a tax sale. So any type of tax planning that you need to do, if you have monies in IRAs and 401ks, uh, you're better off start paying the taxes today uh, and, and, and try to either start in putting money away uh, into tax-free vehicles, or uh, you might as well you know, pay the tax today and to do some IRA conversions or do 401ks to IRAs uh, to Roth conversions in order to limit the impact of taxes in the future. So those are things that are very critical to understand. Uh, the second issue deals with inflation. Uh, first thing that I tell all my clients is that inflation is not tax deductible. So if inflation is at 3%, um, you may have to earn three and a half 3.75, even north of 4%, depending on your tax bracket, in order to have a minimum of 3% net in your investments. And by the way, inflation is a silent killer. It's a having a heart attack because you don't see it, but it's happening to you every single year. Let me give you an example. If, you're, if you need $100,000 of uh, cash flow and or retirement income today, 20 years from now at a 3% inflation rate, uh, that $100,000 need to be at $180,000. That means that $100,000 today, uh, in order for it to maintain its purchasing power, 
you need to have that money, um, that retirement income 20 years from now, be at $180,000 uh, of income per year in order to have the same purchasing power than $100,000 of income has today. So when it comes to taxation and, infl and inflation, those are the major issues that you need to deal with with an eroding factor. Now we need to couple that with uh, stock market volatility. The vast majority of clients, when they come to visit with me, a lot of their money happens to be in the stock market. And, and while you're putting money away and you're not retired yet, you know, if you have market volatility, yes, it's not a good thing. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you have time for the market to recover, then obviously, you know, you can sit it out, you can wait it out and so forth. But when you get into your retirement years, uh, the rules of engagement totally change. You're actually going from an accumulation stage to a decumulation stage. Um, you're actually, uh, it is more important, um, the accumulation rate is not only and no longer as important as the distribution rate. So if you, wanna, if you wanna maintain a high distribution rate, you need to do the proper planning and you need to make certain that you can create principal protection around your assets so in order for your principal to be uh, always guaranteed. Now, Warren Buffett has said many, many a times that there are two rules of investment. Rule number one, uh, don't ever lose the principal of your, of your investments. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. So whenever we do any type of planning with our clients, we want to make certain that their principal is protected because if it is not, if your principal does not have a parachute assigned to it, then that means that in a negative year in which the market is taking a dip, you may be losing 10, 15, 20, 25, 30%. Um, um, uh, some people in 2008 and 2003 lost 50% of their 401ks. Um, and, but if you were in retirement at that point in time, or if you're in retirement at a point in time where the market is dropping 10, 15, 20%, and you still have to go into those accounts and take income out in order to mitigate and maintain your standard of living, now you're actually compounding the problem. What if you happen to be 70 and a half and you're in a qualified plan like an IRA or 401k? Now you're being forced to take money out by the IRS government and you have no choice. And if the account values are heading south and you're still taking money out of these accounts, now again, you're compounding the problem. So that means that your principal may be depreciating a lot faster than it ever has before. So these are all issues that need to be taken into consideration when you do a customized tax planning and retirement blueprint. Now, the last issue I wanna to talk to you about uh, has to do with the risk of dying too soon. And the risk of dying too soon brings obviously a number of other issues that need to be considered in many, many different ways. Um, again, uh, when you're doing tax planning, and this is a way that I do tax planning for my clients, I wanna make certain that when I look at all the stuff that my clients have done over the years, that I look at it through a telescope as opposed to a microscope. The views are totally different. When you look at your finances through a telescope, you get to identify issues and concerns that you would have never been able to see before had you only looked at your retirement distribution and your retirement decisions uh, through a microscope. So when we're looking at the risk of dying too soon, uh, it could be in pre-retirement or it could be in post-retirement. So I have been married 34 years, going on 35 years. My wife actually still likes me, so that's a good thing. I'm very proud of that. We have two beautiful daughter, daughters. Um, but if I were to die uh, prior to retirement, um, what's going what's gonna to be the financial impact to my family? What's going to be the financial impact to my wife? Is she going to be able to, to maintain her standard of living the way she's been accustomed to you know, for the rest of her life? Uh, how about my, my family, my children? How are they going to be coping? Now, obviously, both of my daughters are already out of college uh, and they have their own lives. Um, but you know, how about my grandchildren in the future? You know, life happens every day and you really never, never know. Uh, but if you just want to concentrate on your surviving spouse, if you have a premature death, you know, what if that premature death happens within the first five years of retirement? 
you know, you retire at 65 and by the time you're seven years of, years of age, um, you're no longer with us. Remember, tomorrow is promised to no one, so you need to do proper planning. Now, most of the times that, that I deal with uh, this area of the business with, um, uh, you know, how to, how to minimize and, and how to mitigate the risk, of, um, uh, uh, the risk of dying too soon, I take a look at a number of issues. Uh, number one, um, can I do proper social security replacement planning for my clients? And the reason is the following. If you're married filing jointly and one of you passes away and both of you are receiving social security benefits, you know, the person, uh, the surviving spouse can actually opt in and take the higher of the two social security benefits. So that's a good thing. The bad thing is then one of those social security benefits is going to go away forever. So that means if you are, if you're a family of two and both of you have been relying on two social security incomes coming in every single year and all of, all of a sudden one of you passes on, then there's only going to be one social security benefit being paid out. The question that I ask each and every one of my clients as we do these engagements is, have you done proper social security replacement planning? Have you purchased enough life insurance? And, and, and remember, life insurance is nothing more and nothing less than the purchasing of discounted dollars at a point in time in your life where you need it most. Think of it, uh, if you look at it from a real estate perspective, life insurance is nothing more and nothing less than money in escrow and escrow closes the way someone the day someone dies. So having proper amounts of insurance in order to protect, you know, that social security benefit that's going to go away is very critical for the vast majority of clients that I deal with and the vast majority of families that I engage uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, the other issue is that like life insurance uh, can in many different ways, especially with proper planning, can become asset insurance. So, you know, let's say that you have a million dollar portfolio. If you have no life insurance whatsoever, you're only going to be able to live off the interest that that million dollar portfolio can generate. You know, in today's environment, if you want that interest, um, uh, if, you, if you don't want to run out of income before you run out of life and you want that to be an adequate interest distribution, uh, the most you're going to be able to pull is anywhere between 3 and 4%. So in a million dollar portfolio, you're looking at anywhere between thirty and $40,000 of income. Uh, and that's in order to maintain your standard of living. But as time goes on, inflation is going to start eating away at, at those thirty dollars to $40,000. So you may have no choice but to start invading principal. Now, what if um, one of your family members, husband and wife, one of them has a need for long-term care? Now you need to start um, uh, taking um, uh, more income or um, being more aggressive in your distribution out of your principal in order to mitigate those additional expenses. So all of a sudden now your principal, that principal that you never wanted to touch, you're not going to have any other choice but to start taking distribution and eventually you may run out of income before you run out of life. Um, and, and then obviously your partner in life is going to pass on. Well, if you've done proper uh, income replacement planning and you have proper insurance planning in place, now upon that first death, uh, that death benefit proceed, which will always be federal income tax-free, can now replace that income or that principle that you had earmarked to protect the, the two of you during your retirement years. So from a life insurance perspective, it, it stopped being life insurance and it became asset insurance. So it gives your family more flexibility to have the ability not only to distribute interest, but also to distribute principal. If you do it the right way, in this same million dollar portfolio that I was just sharing with you, you can actually distribute $80,000 a year as opposed to $40,000 a year. How much better would your life be if you have the ability to double your income in retirement, in retirement without having to worry about running out of income before you run out of life? So again, when it comes to the risk and dealing with the risk 
uh, and mitigating with the risk of dying too soon, you have to be able to take all of these issues uh, into consideration as well. Now, what can you do along those lines? Well, obviously, uh, there are a number of products that you can purchase. You have, you know, term insurance, you have uh, permanent insurance where you may have, you know, whole life, you may have index universal life, you have guaranteed universal life. Whenever I do any type of insurance planning with my clients, I am not married to any one company or to any one product. Uh, we're only looking, uh, because every client, every situation is different, we're always, always going to be looking at that particular product or service that can mitigate the concern that we have at a given point in time. So if I want to use asset replacement uh, in life insurance as an asset replacement tool uh, to replace uh, income in retirement, I may use a guaranteed universal life which I can get until age 100 if I want to. Uh, if I want to perhaps mitigate uh, the risk of uh, living too long and I need to put more money away, or I want to mitigate uh, the risk of living with eroding, ta eroding factors, I want to minimize taxes, then I may use uh, an index universal life or a whole life policy that gives me from a taxable standpoint, the ability to put a lot of money in, have the money grow tax deferred, and have the ability to pull the money out tax-free at a point in time in the future where taxes may be so high that having the vast majority of my assets in the tax-free bucket would be a win-win not only for myself, but also for my family as well. So uh, it really depends on your goals and objectives. Obviously, your cash flow will determine uh, the type of product to purchase uh, and so forth. But uh, just to conclude this webinar, and again, I want to thank you all for the time that you've given me tonight, but just to conclude and bring it all together, when it comes to retirement distribution planning, it's a lot more complex than what many of you think and what many of you have thought about. There are a lot of issues and you cannot take, you know, the fatal four on an individual basis. Now we do take them as a retirement strategist. I do take, take them on an individual basis when I'm doing my, my microscopic view of the issues and concerns uh, on those four uh, of the fatal four. But then as I put them together through a customized tax planning and retirement blueprint, which is something that we do for our clients every single day as we engage in them on an ongoing basis, then I put them and I look at them through a telescope and make, sure, make certain that all of these vehicles are working congruently with one another in order to minimize any risk that any of my clients would have in the future while maximizing their standard of living, while maximizing their ability to live a comfortable life, we're maximizing their income and their retirement cash flow um, during their critical retirement years, while making certain uh, that they have done proper planning through their go-go years, their slow-go years, and the no-go years, and then ultimately all the planning that comes as uh, those assets are starting to be transferred from one spouse to the next and to the next generation. Um, I always want to leave all of you, as I do every single week, uh, while we do podcasts and, and webinars and these uh, and seminars that we do on an ongoing basis, is that my number one goal and, and the reason why I do so much of this for all of you um, is the fact that my number one goal is to kind of help each and every one of you change the way that you see things. Because when you change the way that you see things, the things that you see change. Again, a call to action to all of you. If you're interested in any of these issues and you want to gather more information, please feel free to reach out to me. You can call me at area code 786-766-1042. You can also send me an email at BERT, B-E-R-T, at gablestaxgroup.com. And I will be more than happy to schedule a 30-minute uh, either conference call or video conference, as what we're doing tonight, at no cost or obligation. And then you can pick my brain on any questions uh, from a 
uh, business and or retirement stand plan, uh, standpoint that may be keeping you awake at night because I want to make certain that when you wake up in retirement, uh, that you have a life to look forward to because as I say to all my clients, it's not so much where you're retiring from, but what are you retiring to? So again, thank you so very much. Please take me up on this. Um, give me a call, send me an email. If you wanna schedule a visit with me, no cost and, obli uh, and or obligation, and I'll be more than happy uh, to kind of guide you in the, in the right direction. And if at some point in time in the future, you feel that I have earned your credibility and trust, and you would want to engage us in a customized tax planning and retirement blueprint, then you'll have the ability to do so. So I'll talk to you soon. See you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.